you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Every day we stand in an epic spiritual battle between good and evil, and safety is of the Lord. This is Truth Dealer Radio. Warning believers to wake up and be sober, encouraging believers to stand on the Word of God, and motivating believers to be truth dealers with a bold witness for Jesus Christ in these end times. And now the host of Truth Dealer Radio, Brian Moonen. It's Truth O'Clock. Praise God. Welcome back to Truth Dealer Radio, where no matter what time zone you're in, it's Truth O'Clock. Of course, the truth is God's word. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, Hebrews 4.12. I'm Brian Moon, and I'm sounding the alarm, asking you to wake up and join the battle for truth. And it's a spiritual battle. And this week is going to be a little different. I'm going to be issuing a challenge The Emergency Truth Dealer Challenge 2018. And I'm going to be asking you, can you hand out one gospel track every day? You know, if you do that, every year you'll hand out at least 365 gospel tracks. And that's what we need to do. At least. I mean, that's just, that's minimal. But for every one that you hand out, how many people will read it? Who will take it home? Who else will see it? Who will see it at that person's job? Who will see it riding in their car? Who will see it at home on the table, sitting next to the chair, in the drawer? It's all up to God, isn't it? How he'll use that track. And frankly, even if somebody throws it away, they will be held accountable for that before God on Judgment Day because you extended the truth to them and they rejected it. But that's God's grace going out to that person. And it's a testimony. It's a reassuring fact that God loves For God so loved the world, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay? And God is showing mercy to those lost people. He is extending his free gift of salvation to them. And that's encouraging. Because in this world we're in now, there's so much discouragement. There's so much bad news. There's so much fear-mongering and hate We have the truth. We have the hope, the real source of life and joy in Christ to to have peace with God, real true peace that can only be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? We can't hide that light under a bushel. So my challenge to you, and that's what this show is going to be about today, is this mission we're on. So my challenge to you is going to be Hand out at least one gospel track every day. Now, if you do two, you'll ramp it up and you'll hand out over 700 tracks in a year. That's a lot of gospel tracks. And as I said, for every one that you hand out, two or three people may be looking at it and have the chance to read it. And this is how God, he's so loving, he uses us, so to speak. So we're called to share the gospel, obviously the Lord himself in Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All right. Now we don't have an excuse. We don't have an excuse. This is just not a job for pastors or deacons or people who are ministers. We're all called to be ministers to each other, and to the lost by preaching the gospel. That's part of loving our neighbor. Jesus said we're supposed to love others the way he loved us. He told us the truth. He declared the Father. He declared the way. He made the way for us, okay? Amen? We need to share that with everyone or else we're holding the truth in unrighteousness. We're suppressing it. We're holding it down. We're stifling it. We're we're stopping the spread of the gospel. And it doesn't matter where we are, what kind of job we have, or what kind of town we live in, this can happen. This can take place. And this needs to happen. Time is running out. 
Now is the time to spread the truth and warn the lost. People are dying. People are going to hell. People are getting shot every other day in these mass shootings. People are dying of cancer. Interesting, Jesus said to go into all the world, all right? And the devil has blinded the eyes of those in the world to the truth. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. All right? And we're, we're called to shine our light, That's the light of the gospel. That's the truth. It's going to shine in the darkness and smash and destroy and explode Satan's lies. Wherever God calls someone to Jesus, they're going to come. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Father draws them to Jesus. They're going to accept the truth. Okay, so the the spirit of Antichrist is at work in the world. That's why Jesus said we need to go out into the world to shine this light, to get this truth out, because that's where the lost people are. They're in the world. We're living in the world. Our flesh is in the world, but we're not of the world. They're blinded by Satan. They're part of the world system, and they're under the influence of the spirit of Antichrist, which is at work, that's deceiving them on all different levels. Things about creation, they're confused, they're deceived about that. They're deceived about health matters, you name it, because they're blinded by Satan. Only Christ can open their eyes. Only Jesus, only God, 1 John 4, 3, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. All right, so the spirit of Antichrist has been in the world and is at work. We need to mobilize. That's why our king told us to go forth in this battle. Jesus Christ gave us the command already. I'm making up this challenge as a way to remind everyone, and myself included, to stay active, to set a goal, to at least have a purpose, and try to reach this, because we can become so busy, and you know, we need to not forget. We need to make it a habit. And as that habit takes root, you'll start handing out two, three, four a day, perhaps. And that's the goal to mobilize, you know, the way the devil has everyone mobilize. They have all these rallies and parades and all the different things they're doing. Well, we need to share the gospel in that way. Very active and purposeful and all the time. Time is running out. Be strong and do it. Tracks, shirts, all these tools are force multipliers for truth. How many people will read the shirt you're wearing? You know, we have these shirts at kjvprepper.com that I make here. You wear one, how many people are going to read it? Repent, turn from your idols and believe the gospel. They see the name of Jesus. They see you must be born again. They see I am the way, the truth, and the life. How many people would read it when you go out and you're doing your errands or you're out, even if you're just standing in line at the store. And we've heard testimonies of people, you know, it opens up conversations. They're able to hand out more tracts through that. And then obviously, even if you don't give a tract, people will see it and read it. Praise God. It's a force multiplier. It's not to replace preaching in any way. It's just a force multiplier. It's to get the word out on a constant level, all the time, everywhere. It's a tactical witness wear. How many people will read that shirt? You know, how many people? Only God knows. Seeds are planted. That's the important thing. Seeds are planted. How many people will read that track when you give out that track? Only God knows. Will they take it back to work and set it down and read it three or four times and someone else might read it? Will they ask someone, hey, you know, what do you think about this? Is this right? Will they mock it? And then set it down and someone else may read it. Maybe it's meant for the fourth or fifth person that will read it. God is the master. He is working out his plan. He's going to seek and save the lost. Jesus didn't stop doing that when he went back to heaven. He's doing it now through the Holy Spirit, through this work we're doing. Praise God. And I mean we, all of us, all the body of Christ. 
by God's grace, by his power. Amen. He seeks and saves the lost. So, you know, when they take that track and they put it in their car or they take it home and put it on the table, and like I said, even if they throw it away, they're accountable for it. But many times we hear of people reading a track that someone else was given and then it plants seed there and eventually they get saved. So only God knows what's going on with his plan. Let him work. Let him work through you. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye therefore, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. All right, we need to be strong and do it. 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 9. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Amen. Praise God. And he's working on a building. Amen. It's a holy temple fitted together. Jesus Christ is is the cornerstone. And we're being fitly formed together in the spiritual sense. 1 Peter 2, 5, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. 1 Chronicles 28, 20, and David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of a good courage and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed for the Lord God, even my God will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. All right, and and praise God. I mean, those two verses to me, they kind of go together. God is working on this house. He's working on the body of Christ. He's putting it all together, and we're sharing in this work. God is the one who won't fail us. Time is short. Don't steal this time from God by being a waster. Don't be weak and lukewarm and steal opportunities and chances that God gives. God gives us divine appointments, okay? There's so many opportunities. There's so many ways, amen? And give God all the glory. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about time, how to use our time, and why God wants us to use the time, and time is short, to do this work that he's called us to do. We'll be right back on Truth Dealer Radio. Truth Dealer Radio. No matter what time zone you're in, it's truth o'clock. Since 2016, KJV Prepper has been providing quality, original Christian apparel and gear that will witness to non-believers and encourage believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. All apparel is printed here in beautiful upstate New York. Visit kjvprepper.com for effective Christian apparel. Warned to warn. Welcome back to Truth Dealer Radio. To remind you again, we do have a promo code right now, KJV2020 at kjvprepper.com. Christian apparel, gospel tracks, wall art, hats, mugs, 20% off the sale price. So you're going to save up to 30% off. The code is KJV2020. So John 9, 4, Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Okay, Jesus didn't waste time. He didn't waste opportunities. He went forth and preached and declared the kingdom of God and said, repent and believe the gospel. The kingdom of God is at hand. He didn't waste time. And he's our example. And he told us to go out and preach too. And share the truth and shine the light. Romans 13, 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off all the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Praise God. Luke 17, 9 through 10. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, We are unprofitable servants. 
We have done that which was our duty to do. Okay? In other words, this is what we're supposed to do. This isn't something special and fancy. So for us to do what God called us to do, it's just our regular service. It's our reasonable service. So we're commanded to plant seeds. We're commanded to plant incorruptible seed, the word of God, so that others can be saved. It's God's work. Luke 8, 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Jesus said that. 1 Peter 1, 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. So we need to go out. When we hand out a track, it's an incorruptible seed. If that track has God's word and a clear presentation of the gospel, where people are being told that all have sinned and that Jesus Christ is the only way to God, the Father, to have your sins forgiven, and it explains the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that's an incorruptible seed God can use. Amen? And God does use tracts to save people. And we shouldn't be selective of who we give them to. The, the Holy Spirit will show you who to give them to. I've had times when I've walked past a person and I felt that the Lord was leading me to turn around and go back and give them a track. And I've done it sometimes. I, there's probably times when I, maybe I didn't, I don't know. But I know there's times when I have and it seemed a little awkward, but you know, I walk away after giving them a track. I know for sure they were supposed to get it. And I felt satisfied in the Holy Spirit that I did, you know, that work that, that needed to be done at that moment in time. So we got to be sensitive. Don't be too busy or too embarrassed. You shouldn't be embarrassed at all. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, we have to be in a right relationship with God. And that's why I'm issuing out this challenge. And I'm calling it emergency truth challenge because it's an emergency. People are dying and going to hell. We don't know. There's that person you might look at. Should I give that person a track? You don't know. They could die 10 minutes later or tomorrow or a week from now. God knows, though. Maybe that's why he's leading you who to give them to. It's all his master plan that he's working out. We can't understand that. All I know is we're commanded to do it. And praise God for his Holy Spirit that directs us and guides us into all truth and shows us how to proceed with this work. So the word of God is incorruptible. It's alive. The word of God is quick and powerful, more powerful than any two-edged sword. And it pierces people. It discerns their thoughts and intents of their heart. When they read the truth in the scripture and God is drawing them, it'll pierce them and it'll divide the truth from the error. The light will shine in the darkness and it'll divide and they'll have a choice to make. Romans 10, 15 says, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. And like I said, anyone can do this. Anyone, race, shape, size, color, however you want to look at it, age, anyone can do this. We're all one in this work. As we read in 1 Corinthians 3, he that planteth and he that watereth are one. All right, and we're, we're workers together with God. 2 Timothy 4, 2 says, Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. Amen? That's like all the time. There's no time that that covers the whole time you're, you're here on earth. In season and out of season, all the time, we're supposed to be ready always to give an answer for the hope that lieth within us. Amen. First Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Amen. So we're supposed to always be ready to do this work. And as I said, the Holy Spirit will guide us and give us the timing, who to give these to, when, where. He's, God sets all those things up. He's the master planner. 
and he's bringing it all to pass. Praise God. And how shall they preach except they be sent? We're sent out. We're sent out. We're called out of the world, and then we're sent out into preach the gospel and shine the light into the world for God's sake. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. He was sent. He came. He did his mission. He preached. He went to the cross. Amen. He died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again on the third day. He's alive. He's seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. He's coming again someday to judge. And time is short. Time is running out. So I, I'm putting out this challenge. Let's get the gospel out. And we don't know what's happening here in this country. I'm sorry, but do you think this country's going to go on forever? There's problems here. It's coming to a head. And only God knows how long this window is. We need to get the gospel out. And that's why I'm doing this. Psalm 68, 11 says, The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Praise God. And just thank God. Thank you, Lord, for giving the word. Thank you for giving your son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. And for allowing us to be part of the work and co-labor together with God and, and publish the word. All right, and that doesn't just mean you have to stand up in a pulpit. Handing out tracts is very, very important work. So I would challenge you, get some tracts, make your own, do however you want. Try to hand out at least one track a day. We're coming up on July 1st, so if you want to start on July 1st, go till next year, July 1st. And you're going to either hand out one a day or more than one a day. But at a minimum, if you hand out only one track... Every day, you'll hand out 365 tracts. Amen? And God will multiply that. He'll honor that. He'll use that. We'll never know until we get to heaven how it's going to be used. Oftentimes, you may never see the person again. doesn't matter if you're traveling or if you're in town. God's allowed me to be able to give tracts to former teachers from when I was a little kid, elementary school teachers and things like that. You can give tracts to so many people, and whether they receive it or not, our duty is to hand them out. Get them out. The devil is certainly busy. He's got cults and false gospels going out like crazy on the TV, the prosperity gospel, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Mormons, their little foot soldiers. They're out like crazy trying to work their way to heaven, spreading their faults, lies. We need to at least match that. Our God is so worthy. The truth is worthy to be preached. Amen. And if you're saved, you know. Thank God someone told you the truth, right? Thank God someone came to me and told me the truth and preached the gospel to me. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. Amen? 1 Timothy 1.15 This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I just want to issue that challenge. Emergency truth challenge. And please, you know, tell other people about it if you want. I'm not really that good at creating, you know, social campaigns and all that. But I just want to let you guys know, anyone that's listening, I'm going to probably post this on my YouTube also to just let people know about this challenge. And as I said, if you want tracks, we have Truth Dealer tracks. They have a solid gospel message on them kjvprepper.com go in the christian gear section also if you take any pictures when you're out evangelizing handing out tracks or putting them in the gas pump in the gas station or however you're getting the word out if you want to send a picture brian at kjvprepper.com maybe we'll post the picture just to encourage other believers to get out there and do the same thing so i just want to thank you for listening praise god let's get the word out Take this challenge or make up your own. I honestly don't care. I'm just trying to encourage you and edify the body of Christ and, and mobilize and let you know we can be a force multiplier. Tracks, shirts, all these things. And time is short. We need to get the word out. Truth Dealer Radio is listener supported. If you're led to support Truth Dealer Radio, there's a way to do that at truthdealer-radio.com. God bless you. I hope you tune in again next time. Be strong. Truth Dealer Radio. No matter what time zone you're in, 
It's True O'Clock. TruthDealerRadio.com. You keep talking about Jesus. Some folks out there just might be listening.